Got a couple of new laptops I'm excited for. Two new Gigabyte laptops, a 15 inch, which features an OLED display and a 17 inch, which has an HDR display. They've got a couple of features that will be really useful to me as part of their creator lineup for content creation. They have Thunderbolt 4, which is, I mean, that's the thing that we use all the time, fast transfers. If you're unfamiliar, it's uh, Intel technology. We have the latest Intel chips in here as well. So real powerhouse stuff. I'm curious to contrast and compare the OLED display on the 15 inch model with the HDR display on the 17 inch model. They, they have a couple of different attributes. The 17 inch model has a 500 nit brightness. Let's go ahead, jump in here and see what the latest from Gigabyte looks like. So I'll kick it off with this one, which is the Aero 15 OLED. So this is the smaller of the two models probably a box in a box scenario just a guess yes it is okay so we have a uhd display so 4k just under 4k uhd inside of a 15 inch display that is some serious pixel density that's going to be decent to look at this also has an rtx 3080 so even though it's targeted at the creator individual because they can utilize uh, some graphics power obviously but also you could game on it no problem there uh it has an i7 11800h chip inside latest generation intel chip 8 gigs of ram x2 so 16 gigs of ram on two chips m.2 pcie ssd 1tb so lots of ssd storage as well so this is a fairly well specced device all right, so here, oh, actually fairly thin. I can tell without even taking this external wrapper off, fairly thin and light. This is gonna be your charger, power extension cable, 230 watt power adapter. And this is something you'd expect to see with an RTX 3080 inside the laptop. Here is the Aero 15 OLED. You can see the styling. Now, I've looked at the Aero lineup in the past. It's got this kind of understated stealth look to it. This one has a carbon fiber-esque pattern. Aero logo over here, some other little touches on the back. You can see these grills over here, some cooling, another Aero badge. Let's look around the side of the device. So over here, we have a full-size HDMI port. This looks like a display port, USB type A port. We have an analog audio port for a headset or microphone. There's also an ethernet jack for a wired connection. Over on the other side, we have our power adapter. There's an SD card slot. This is a must in the creator community, highly appreciated. We also have our USB type C connector, but that's actually Thunderbolt 4 capable. That's gonna be very fast transfer speed, but also the ability to connect to external docks and things that support even more inputs because you have so much throughput on Thunderbolt 4. Two more USB type A ports over here. So lots of connectivity on there for all your various peripherals. The other thing I wanna show off is over on the bottom. Again, they could have put just like a generic shape to this grill on the bottom, but they even stylize that to kind of tie it all together. So what I like about this is it has some personality, but it's not overwhelming. All right, we lift it up. It is a slim bezel along top. Now they've been able to achieve this by placing the camera down here. This is kind of a controversial location, but I don't mind it. It is there, you can cover it when not in use. But the benefit here is you get this incredibly trim bezel at the top, which is where you do spend all your time on your laptop is staring at that. I also, of course, like the mechanical switch to cover up the camera. Removing this portion, you can see the trackpad over here and the keyboard as well. I like this uh, almost mechanical looking font. Of course, we have Intel Core i7, GeForce RTX. It is part of their studio line. And let me just give this keyboard a little touch. So obviously a backlit keyboard as well. You've got some fairly decent travel in there. 
they've even been able to slam in a number pad on a 15 inch laptop, which you don't see all the time. Oh, the HDMI port is HDMI 2.1. So that's 4K 120 Hertz video output, which is a nice little bonus as well. If you happen to have a gaming monitor or something like that, that supports that. And it also has DTS audio built in as well. I presume the audio is gonna be delivered up here. And another thing I'm noticing the fingerprint scanner built into the trackpad right there. Okay, let me put this to the side for a moment and let's go ahead and check out the 17 inch model. So the name on this one is the Aero 17 HDR. It's not OLED, but it is very bright. In fact, it has a higher brightness rating than the 15 inch model, up to 500 nits of brightness. We have some different colors on the packaging. This one has an orange theme going on and my specification is over here once again. UHD, this one's packing an RTX 3070. Of course, there's plenty of specifications available to you depending how you want to configure yours, whether it's the 15 or the 17. It's got an i7-11800H, also got 16 gigs of RAM. You have that one terabyte M.2 storage as well, just like the other model, Windows 10 Pro. So yeah, it's actually a fairly similar spec. A lot of this decision between these two is gonna have to do with form factor, whether or not you want a 17 inch footprint or 15 inch footprint, and then whether or not you want absolute brightness or if you really wanna have that OLED. Once again, it is maybe thinner than you might expect to find in this particular specification. It's actually pretty thin, even with the cover still on there. And let's check out this power adapter. It should be the same, maybe? Yeah, 230 watts. Okay, so styling remains. We have that same carbon fiber looking pattern here. The shape is ever so slightly different. And a 17 inch footprint. I mean, you really see the difference when you look at it like this. Like, okay, that's, maybe the shape isn't different. It's just scale. I was just looking at this curvature on the back. Either way, very similar styling. Let's go ahead and check out the ports on here, see if that's the same. So USB type A, Thunderbolt 4, display port, uh, full size HDMI 2.1, power on the other side. We have dedicated audio ports, a dedicated output for 3.5 and a dedicated input for a microphone. Two USB type A, the layout is just a little bit different over here. Still have a full size SD card slot and an ethernet port, cool. Both very capable and flexible from a diversity of ports perspective. All right, so we lift this one up. Once again, incredibly slim bezel along top. I am noticing that this display has a matte finish on it compared to the glossy one that's on the OLED over here. Audio layout looks a little bit bigger here. Could be the grill, could be the actual audio. Keyboard layout looks pretty much identical between the two. Uh, of course, you have a little extra space on the 17 inch model, so it doesn't go right up to the edge. And the remainder of the features are the same. So this choice is gonna have a lot to do with the display as you probably already can tell. So the key to this decision, this comparison between these two is gonna really come down to this display and your preference in displays. And honestly, it's a really hard choice for me. So on the 15 inch, you have this OLED and I am a sucker for OLED. I love OLED. It's got these, I mean, the black is just straight up black and the colors are incredibly vibrant, but it's also got this glossy finish to it, which may not be to some people's taste well you have this 17 inch option as well which has the matte finish on it and it has that 500 nit peak brightness so it's still vibrant but it's pulled back ever so slightly from oled characteristics now for me i'm probably gonna select the oled model out of the two but i like having the options and i'm sure you would too of course form factor also plays a role covering a couple more features here uh, gigabyte is claiming that either of these models is capable of all day battery life of course it's also got wi-fi 6 built in for faster connection speed Speeds. Thunderbolt 4, uh, this is basically the fastest throughput you're gonna get right now over the USB Type-C connector. And then as far as the processor goes, you have this choice between the i7-11800H or you can go all the way up to the i9-11980HK if you need even more performance and you can see some of those specifications on the screen right now. Up to five gigahertz on eight cores with 24 megabytes of Intel smart cache. The 11th gen Intel Core processor 
processors are capable of editing 4K footage, which is a must for us in our workflow within this environment. And either of those 11th gen Intel Core processors are more than capable of handling the 4K footage that we record and edit here in our studio. Now looking around the design a little closer, you can see it's got a sort of stealth fighter approach with the angles and this is carried between both models, the 17 and the 15. So here's a quick demo of the fingerprint scanner, which in this case is built right into the trackpad. Uh, it just puts it in a location that's fairly convenient and you're probably not gonna miss because it's sitting there on a trackpad, which is a place you already put your finger in order to track around. So the operation is identical, whether it's a 15 inch or the 17 inch model. Now, since Gigabyte is a company that is manufacturing gaming laptops, as well as creative focused laptops, workstation laptops like these ones, uh, they're bringing some of that gaming keyboard expertise into what they're delivering over here as well. So you do have that RGB backlighting and you have a kind of key travel on there that uh, gaming laptops normally receive. And that's a good thing, I promise you, because often when it comes to creator style laptops, the keyboard can get overlooked. So these two laptops are very similar and also different, as I said, when it comes to that display choice, which I think is gonna be the key characteristic. So there you have it, it's the latest from Gigabyte, the Aero 15 OLED and the Aero 17 HDR. Let me know down in the comments which of these two you would choose.